All right, academic astronomy. Welcome to your first plotting of the year. This is going to be on our north circumpolar sky. These are the first two of up to six star charts you're going to get this year. It's Mr. Krug coming at you with our SC002. So step one, always start on the two chart because all you have to do here is connect the dots. And this is how a constellation should look. We've got Ursa Major, the big bear. Oh my gosh, girls, Mr. Krug is trying to record a video. Stop yelling. We got Ursa Major, the big bear, right there. We've got Ursa Minor, the little bear. Snaking between them, we've got Draco the dragon. We've got Cassiopeia the queen. Depending on the time of night you see her, she could look like a W or an M. And her hubby, Cepheus the king, who looks like an upside down house. Now in academic only, we do include this rather obscure constellation, Camelopardalus, which you might think is a camel, but is actually a giraffe. And we include it because this is the only other truly circumpolar constellation, at least from where we are at 40 degrees north. So these six constellations are always up in the sky. Everything else you all see out here at the periphery is equatorial. It's going to rise and set throughout the year. So get one last look. Here's how the SC002 should look. Now, let's transition over to the SC002T. So steps two through four will take you through this chart, and you can see there's considerably more that you have to do. So step number two, connect those same dots to make the same six constellations, and please use the same color that you did on the SC002 chart. Step three, write their names in all capital letters, once again using the same color. Now here is where it gets a little bit challenging because on this chart, you do need to show the big and little dippers with a dotted line. I've done it this way, but there's a number of ways that you could do it. So here we have the big dipper, and what I've done is I've outlined it with a dotted line, or you can actually leave this blank for the solid line and only do a dotted line but somehow do show a dotted line to represent the Big Dipper, the most famous asterism in the sky. Now I would say Ursa Minor and the Little Dipper are far more challenging because it's basically the same exact shape. Here's the only thing I do differently. When I'm drawing in the whole Little Bear, Ursa Minor, I close off the ladle. But then for my Little Dipper, I just do a dotted line around the outside and I leave the ladle open right there. Remember, the dippers always face each other, so when one is upside down, it's dumping its contents into the other and vice versa. So let's review before we do our final step. Step one, trace all six constellations on the SC002 chart. Step two, connect the dots with the same exact color. Oh my gosh, it's so loud. Are you serious? Mrs. Krug pouring a drink very loudly off to the side. Step three, write in the names in capital letters. So we still haven't switched colors and add dotted lines for our asterisms, the big and the little dippers. Finally, step four. This is the one time, everybody, that you are going to switch colors. And so I've used a nice blue-orange combination here. And what I've done that you don't have to do is I also like to just put a ring of color around the stars that are named. I think it makes them really pop and stand out. So down here in Ursa Major, we have our pointer stars, Dube and Mirac. And you might recall they are called pointer stars because they will always point us right at the North Star Polaris, which is very important for navigation and might even save your life someday. Then in academic, we go through the whole rest of the Big Dipper, which we don't do in semester astronomy. We have Fad and Magrez, Alioth, and by the way, all these stars that begin with AL are Arabic stars because AL in Arabic means the. We have al -Qaid, and then here we have that famous quasi-double star, Alcor and Mizar. Finally, here in academic astronomy, this is the only object we're going to do twice this year. Do highlight M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. It's invisible with the naked eye, but it looks stunning through a telescope. It is an example of stellar cannibalism. One galaxy, nom nom nom, eating another one, which we'll talk about in the springtime sky as well. If we take our pointer stars up to the North Star Polaris, this is in turn at the handle of the Little Dipper or Ursa Minor. 
Also here, just highlight the bright star Kochab, one of the two guardians of the pole that makes small circles around Polaris, the North Star. In Draco the Dragon, please highlight the bright star Edamon in the diamond-shaped head of the dragon. And then also highlight this star, Thuban. It's fairly dim and obscure, so you might wonder why we are actually learning it. Notice this dotted line right here? This is called the orbit of precession of the pole, which you can actually see labeled on this chart. Basically, everybody, due to Earth's wobble on its axis, it traces out a big circle on the night sky over 26,000 years. And any star along the circle can be the North Star. For us, it's Polaris. Back during the time of the ancient Egyptians, it was Thuban in the tale of Draco the Dragon. They actually aligned some of their pyramids, we think, to the star Thuban, which was their North Star. Now, a little curiosity that I found myself, you can actually use Fad and Magrez as pointer stars to point you right at Thuban. Up in Cepheus the King, please highlight the star Alderaman in the corner of the house. And in Cassiopeia the Queen, it sounds like a baby cow, calf, and Shadir in her W. No bright stars to highlight in Camelopardalus the giraffe, but make sure you do include it as well. It looks kind of like a Greek letter lambda right there. Remember, that's a giraffe. There are the legs of the giraffe, and right there would be the neck. So get one last look. This is the most challenging of the two star charts. And I will say the most missed thing students have, everybody, don't forget to use dotted lines for your big and your little dippers. All right, that's Mr. Krug. This is our first installment of Constellation Charts. Can't wait to do this again with everybody. Peace.